Hey guys, Kevin here with Victory 4x4. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through our camera relocation, as well as license plate light install on the GX460 rear. All right, so at this point, if you're gonna be running an adventure carrier, specifically with a tire mounted to it, you're gonna to have to relocate both your backup camera, your license plate, as well as a license plate light to go along with that. So to get started with that, we're gonna to have to do a little bit of interior disassembly so that we can access the wiring for all that. To begin on ours, you can see we've got our hatch table mounted in place, so it's gonna be just a little bit different than what you might have to do, but it's not a big deal. We still gotta take out all the same fasteners as you do, just a couple extras along the way. So here, I'm just gonna remove the top two bolts that hold that table in place. Then I can fold this table down and removing this right side panel. I'm gonna have one 10 mil bolt head to remove right here. And we also need to remove this left side panel just because these clips help hold that plastic in place as well when everything's closed. At that point, we can fold this table back up. You're gonna have a plastic cover up here around your latch that just needs to be removed using a flat blade screwdriver. And then over here in the grab handle portion, there's a small plastic cover, again, using that flat screwdriver that can be popped out of the way. And then with a Phillips bit, there's a screw down there that can be removed as well. And then at this point, the rest of this plastic is just held in with some plastic clips. So you can just get a hold of the grab handle and the top edge on here and start getting those to pop out. The bottom of this upper plastic will pop free and then you can separate the two at this point. And then this can be set aside. Now with that removed, to gain access to the wiring behind here, we need to remove this blue plastic cover. Now, if you have an area of this that's being kind of especially stubborn like this and doesn't want to separate, just grab a razor knife and kind of cut that stuff, that adhesive, as you go along. And when you push this back up, it'll adhere back together just fine. Now with that out of the way, grab your 10 mil socket. There's gonna be two bolts right in here that allow you to remove the camera mount. Now with this removed from the door, you can grab a small pair of pliers. There's a little thumb tab on this connector that needs to be depressed, and then you can pull that right back to release it. It's just a little hard to get your fingers down in there to push on that. Then using a small Phillips head screwdriver, there's two screws that hold this camera into the mount. Those can be removed, allowing you to remove the camera. And then you'll just save this camera as well as the screws for just a little bit later. And then this can be bolted back in place. Now that does leave a small hole in there that you can cover up with a piece of tape or something if you so choose. It's not really gonna allow a whole lot of water or anything back here into the door, so it's not a major issue. Then to gain a little bit more access to your wiring, simply take a razor blade and cut back all of the tape on this wire loom. Be careful not to go too deep into there and cut into any wires. And now this ties into another harness back in here, but we're just gonna go as far back as we can for right now. 
Then once you have that exposed from the loom, you're gonna have just a little bit more tape on here that you can lightly cut away and peel back just so that we can work freely with all of these wires. Now that you have all these wires a little bit more exposed, you're gonna to wanna to find the wires in the gray sheathing right here and then do the same thing, just kind of really lightly cut into that wire or just the sheathing, really. You're not trying to cut into any of the wiring. And then you're gonna to wanna to peel that back just the same. You don't have to go too far here, but what we're really doing at this point is just trying to gain a little bit of extra wire to work with because we are gonna to have to cut and crimp these on to our new wires to reconnect our camera. Okay, now once you're comfortable with how far back you've gone, you're sure you've got enough wire to work with here to recrimp all those later, just pull aside this unshielded ground wire here because we don't want to cut that. Pull these all out straight so you get about equal amounts and then you can cut the brown, white, red, and black wires right here. Then at this point, that can be set aside just for a moment and we'll use that later to reconnect the camera. Then I'm gonna peel away just a little bit more of this sheathing so I have wire to reconnect to here inside the door. Now you can grab your provided wiring from our relocation kit, get these all separated out, and then you're gonna see that we have wire that matches all of these colors. So you're just gonna be trying to get the red, white, black, and brown wires so that we can tie them in right here. Now you can grab your wire strippers and just strip back all four of these wires, both on the factory harness and then the four provided wires. And once you get those stripped back, just go ahead and twist these ends to get them prepped for our butt connections. Then grab your crimpers as well as one butt connector and then just connecting the corresponding wire colors and crimp these together one at a time. Always be sure to pull back and check on your connections here just to make sure you've got that good and tight on the wire. Then we're just gonna do the same thing on the other three wires, as well as shrink these up with a heat gun, being that we provide the heat shrink style connectors here. Now with our camera wiring extended, we're gonna jump back here and work on our license plate lights. So you simply, using that thumb tab, need to disconnect this connection and then similar technique with our razor blade, we're just gonna cut back this outside sheathing to gain access to our wires. Again, being careful not to cut into any of those wires. And then just expose as much of this as you can to make it easier to work with. Now at this point, we're gonna be using the white and the black wires here on the back of this connection. Your white's gonna be your power wire, black being the ground. There's a couple different ways you can do this at this point, and it really just depends on whether or not you wanna retain the license plate lighting on the back of this door and have it light up anytime your headlights are on. So for that, you would simply strip these back and solder a wire into that without ever actually disconnecting it. For ours, I'm gonna kill those wires on the back of the door, or the lights, I mean, on the back of the door. So I'm just gonna cut these right here, strip them back, and butt splice in, just like we did on our camera wires. Now for this, I just wanna be sure to leave myself enough wire here on the back of this connector to work with. So keep a couple inches there. And then again, we'll just twist these up. Now for this here, we're just gonna be using a different color wire 
And that's just because on our camera, we already have black and white wires in place. This is just gonna help us differentiate which one's which. So I'm just gonna be connecting my gray wire to the black here as a ground, and my green wire to the white as a power. Then we can kind of tidy up all this wiring we've got hanging loose down here and begin routing them back into the vehicle. So for these two, I'm just gonna run them back in place as far as I can with the existing wires, put this loom back over top and tape that all up. And then do the same thing here with the camera wires, getting them back into this factory loom and taping that all up. And then we'll extend this with some of the provided loom before we route it through the door. After that, we can begin routing all this wire. So our four camera wires, we're gonna pull behind this vertical stretch of harness right here. There you can see my small extension piece of loom and that's really just to separate these from the license plate wires as they come back to this harness here. That's kind of just as a precautionary measure to reduce any chance of electrical interference between these two harnesses. Not 100% necessary. And then we'll just chase that back with our green and gray wires because those are all gonna be going to the same location. And now, since this is inside of the vehicle, it's protected from weather. We don't have to go too crazy worrying about protecting these with any loom or anything. They're not in a position where they should get damaged. We're simply gonna keep them tight together and either zip tie or electrical tape them in place all the way back along this harness and then to our loom back here. Next, to gain access to where those wires need to go, we're gonna have to do just a little bit more interior disassembly. So we'll start down here with these hooks. Simply take our flat screwdriver, pull this plastic cover back, and then with a 10 mil socket, remove the screw holding that in place. Do the same thing over here on the driver's side. That will allow you to pull this cover panel that's then just held in with a couple plastic clips. With that out of the way, still using your 10 mil, come in here and remove these three screws that are holding this plastic piece in place. Get those out of the way. Once those are out of the way, just come in here on this back corner, there's a tab that locks these two panels together here that you just need to release and then you can lift up on that, freeing up all these plastic clips. Then grab a hold of this small trim panel down here, just held in with clips, pull up and a little bit inward and that should pop right out of place as well. After that, you can come up here to the side panel, simply twist that clip and then grab a Phillips driver to remove the screw that's down in there. Using a flat screwdriver, come up here and pop that small cover loose, but don't lose it. And then using either a Phillips driver or a 10 millimeter, that screw can be removed. After that, you're just gonna get this seal pulled back just enough that you can get your fingers in here and start pulling outward to release the plastic clips holding this in place.
Now at this point, it's gonna be hard to see on camera what's behind here without completely removing this panel, but that's all the farther you really need to go to be able to access your wire routing through here. We're just gonna get our wires routed through this factory flex connection here to the door into this interior, and then they're just gonna go out a factory grommet that's easy to see through here, straight down outside of the factory floorboard and under the vehicle. And then one good thing just to note here, since you can't entirely see what I'm doing, if you're not quite sure where to route these, you can kind of follow along all these factory wire routing paths and lines, and that way you know there's gonna be enough clearance behind all these panels where you put your wires so that they don't get damaged or pinched during reassembly. Now, in order to get the wires through this flex connection, we're just gonna pull these all out kind of nice and tight and even with one another. Kind of sort out any twists or tangles you might have here on the ends. Which I clearly have a few. Once you reach the ends of these wires, grab your electrical tape. And just tape all of your loose ends tight so that they're not trying to fight you as you route these through any tight spaces. Now one good thing, kind of as a tip, that you can sort of do here too, is if they're not already, you can stagger the lengths of these wires just a little bit, like an inch or two. You don't really want to cut off too much and leave yourself short at the end but just slightly staggering the ends of these so that you start out with one or two really small wires will make this easier going through all of these grommets in tight places. Now, if you are having any trouble getting these routed where you need them to go, grab yourself a coat hanger or like I have here, just a piece of welding wire and then tape that on about the last two or three inches to our camera harness that we've built back here. And then you can use this, since it's a little bit more rigid and substantial, as a guide to get through really both of these grommets. Now once you're through where you need to go, just as you work your way along here, you can guide your wires through and pull out any slack so that we can then tie these up nice in place along the way, all the way through here. After you have it routed through this flex connection, you can simply button this back up. You're gonna kinda wanna do this as you go along so that you're eliminating any slack back here inside of the vehicle and getting the neatest, most accurate wire routing along the way. Now, we can put this blue plastic up back up in place. Again, make sure it's out of our way. And then, again inside of here, I'm not gonna be using a loom, I'm just gonna route alongside the existing wiring. But what I am gonna do is just tape these all every few inches, nice and tight, just to keep them from kind of flopping all over the place in there or getting twisted or tangled on anything. Now you don't have to go too far with this because you're not gonna have a ton of wiring left inside of the vehicle right here. but basically you're gonna wind up with something that looks a bit like that. I'm just gonna do one more piece of tape right here. And then just as we did on that flex connection, I'll use my weld wire as a guide to get through that bottom grommet and pull these wires all down through the bottom. Now, here under the vehicle, you can see this is the grommet that we're trying to push these wires down through. So for that, I'm just gonna get up in here with a razor blade 
Again, just cutting a little bit of tape, just enough that I can hopefully get it peeled back. Just to loosen everything up here on this grommet and be able to push right out through the factory hole in this location. Then we can just pull all our wire down through here, tie it up tight inside of the vehicle and retape this connection. So now that we have this mostly routed and wrapped up, at least inside of the vehicle here, you can kind of see how I'm gonna route it. So I just came down this side, right along this factory connection or harness. I'm gonna tie it in place there with a couple cable ties and let it run that last couple inches loosely down through the grommet. Now it's at this point that I'm gonna wrap all the remaining length of this wire, or at least as much as I can, in this provided loom. And with this, I'm just gonna push this as tight as I can up to that grommet that we just came through in the floor of the vehicle and tape everything up tight. Now to start routing your wire through the carrier, you're just gonna to need to get it up here between the bumper and your rear door. And then you'll come up through this bottom hole here in the carrier. Just kind of guide that up. And out of this side hole. Make sure your loom is taped to your wire here so it doesn't just try to peel back. Disregard this other wire. You won't have that. That's something for an antenna that we have in place on this vehicle. Feed that all the way through. And then you can get it relatively snug here. We're just gonna use a couple cable ties and tie it back into the provided holes tight behind the carrier here. You don't want it too tight along here, but this is gonna loosen up as you close this carrier and provide you some extra slack while you're going down the road. Next, just take your wire and route it right through one of the bolt holes in the back of this carrier. Somewhere close right up here to where we come out. Again, pull all your slack out so you can route this nice and tight along the way. And then you can tie that in place right there. Then reaching through from the back side of the tire, you can pull your wire right through this center hole provided in the tire mount. Now at this point, you can get your camera installed to the mounting bracket and get that all assembled and in place with your license plate relocation kit. So to start that, you're gonna take the camera, insert it into the bracket just like this and then using the original mounting screws through the holes in the back side, you can bolt that in place. Now the 10 to 13 model and the 14 and up model are gonna use a different mounting bracket. So here on the 10 to 13, you're gonna grab the bracket with the four. On the 14 and up, it'll have a seven cut in place there. To get the camera installed to that, you're simply gonna take it in the original orientation with the top up, install it into that bracket with the four cut out, and then using the factory screw along with this very small washer that we provide, you can bolt that in place to the bracket. Now you wanna make sure when you're working with these small screws and washers that the washer sits nice and flat and square over the provided slot before you tighten these up. Once that's tightened up, simply back it up with the clamshell half. Then the remainder of this can be installed the same way as the 14 and up. After that, 
you can grab the clamshell portion of the bracket, mounting it to the back like so. Back that up with your license plate relocation bracket and the actual license plate mount will go right on the front. So when they're all said and done, you wind up with a stack that looks something like that. And then you can simply secure those together with the provided quarter inch bolts. With everything assembled, you can place that on top of the mounting bracket. Drop your carriage bolt in place. And then using the lock washer and wing nut, you can lock that down. Now you can either do this part kind of out in space or you can do what I'm gonna do and simply reconnect that factory wiring connector that we clipped off earlier. And I'm just kind of doing that to hold it solid in place so I can work with these wires and install the butt connectors without having to hang on to everything at once. So then we're simply going to pull our wire up here about to the location we need it. And then kind of estimate our length. One thing that is a good idea to do up here As I separate out my wires, I'm gonna separate my license plate light wires from the camera wires. So I'm only kind of doing one thing at a time. And then it's as simple as kind of what we did before with the other end of these wires. You're stripping back all four of these, twisting the ends and connecting them with a butt connector. You don't have to worry about this being removable because you can just unclip it here from the back of the camera using that factory connection. Now one thing we're just gonna kind of recommend here, it isn't a necessity, but it's just kind of a tidiness step, is to take and separate these wires out into pairs of two, and just clip two of them a little bit shorter than the others, about the length of a butt connector, and then do the same thing to correspond with them on the other end. And that way, you kind of offset two of those connectors from one another, you don't wind up with this be, being such a fat wide stack of connections that looks a little bit ugly once everything's wrapped in tape. Now you can kind of see what I meant about staggering those connections. Now I'm just going to shrink these up and we can move on to these license plate light wires. Next you can see we've already installed our license plate light here on the provided tab on the license plate bracket. That's just in, held in place with an adhesive foam. I cut these two wires here a little bit shorter than they are when the thing is new and then cut both my gray and green wire back in here to correspond in length for what we're looking for there. Now for those we're just going to connect them using the provided spade terminals. One tip here, use a female and a male terminal back here and then do the same out here so you're not using like two female terminals on the same end. That way they can't be installed incorrectly as far as your power and your ground. So here, this red wire is gonna be the power wire in on our LED light. So you'll wanna connect that to the green wire that we ran power with earlier. And then just connect your gray to the black here for ground. So I'm just using a female spade here on my red power wire. And then a male spade terminal here on the black ground. Both of these being on the light wires. Check those connections. And then to correspond with what we just did, I'll be using the female spade on my gray ground wire back here. Followed up by the male on my green power wire.
Once you've made all your connections, it's simply a matter of tidying up your wires. So we're gonna push as much of this as we can back into this loom. I've already kind of cut my loom off here to the desired length. And then any wire left exposed at this point, we're simply gonna tape up so that it's not only black and hidden, but is also protected from the elements. After that, we can install our license plate to this bracket using the provided quarter inch hardware. After that, you just wanna double check, make sure your light comes on, your camera functions fine, and then you can get back inside and button up the interior. For this, it's just the reverse of what we did to take things apart. So I'm gonna start by reinstalling this side panel, getting all the snaps back in place, and then reinstalling the mounting hardware. Just pop your rear cover panel back in. And reinstall the three mounting bolts for it. followed by the seat cover and floor panel section. Make sure all those clips snap in and then reinstall the cargo hooks to hold it down. Following that, we can reinstall this rear door panel. Again, making sure we get it up behind this top trim. And then in our case, since we've got our table in place, making sure to get our aluminum spacers back in behind there. That spare tire toolkit, as well as the cover panel. Get this rear cover panel installed. Now don't forget to open up the glass and reinstall this trim cover right here for the latch. And that's really it for your license plate and camera relocation. Now if you guys have any questions about this or any other product here at Victory 4x4, feel free to reach out to us, info at victory4x4.com or give us a phone call, 269-459-8447.